friendship back then. But you know it, Anthony. I'd planned to go and do the same observation three weeks before they switch on last year. And what do you know? Same script, same thing this year. I plan it a week or two in advance. And it's it's flat. It's a long way to go every day, 180 mile round trip. <laughs> you know, I can't do that. Yeah. I was looking yesterday for all soundless, all soundless hangouts when he started doing this puncture train bullshit. Uh, um, I couldn't find exactly the location where he where he was taking the videos from. I could not find it on the power lines and all the on the bridge. And I'm gonna have a, a small window a, a stop, you know. I'm gonna spend the night the 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 tent, and then the 11 in the morning we're gonna wake up early. My wife is gonna drive me whatever I tell her, like, yeah, let's go to this spot. And she's gonna stay in the car with the dogs. I'm gonna take some videos, you know. I don't wanna miss that chance. I wanna go to the same spot, but I don't seem to find the exact location. You could probably work it out by looking at his videos and working out where you need to be on Google Earth. Yeah, I saw I saw a nice, nice spot, you know, that I could I could you know, observe kind of the same thing, but I don't know exactly where he was. Uh, but so yeah, that's what I'm gonna I got like two spots where I can observe the same thing. One in the left of the bridge, one in the right of the bridge. So I'm going to do that, you know, whatever. Yeah, the thing is last year as well, it was a five meter tide. So they can, I, I did it with a five meter tide. I saw the mirror ball, right? So let's see them argue. Okay, yeah, it was slightly lower, but I was seeing the mirror ball, the mirror ball, mate. And my prediction on whatever I'm going to catch on video is going to be uh, uh, mirroring like like that superior mirage bullshit big time. Are they going to say, like, oh, wrong wrong time conditions, wrong weather conditions, it's too hot or whatever bullshit. I don't care. I mean, whatever I catch, that's what you got to put out there, you know? I think the show is starting soon. It probably will. I might make another brew in a minute. One minute. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you have not done so already be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support this channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live and there's also a PayPal link in the info box below the video once it's rendered. But most importantly if you would like to join the discussion simply mute the page you are currently watching then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join please don't swear. If you do you'll be ejected and if you are please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. Now we are joined by The Plain Truth, Sleeping Warrior, Ranty Flat Earth, Jose, Eric. Who else we got? Me. Hold on, I'm not there yet. <laughs> Ian. Chris, Chocolate Saiyan, and Darwin. Good to have you all. Good afternoon. Hello, hello, hello. What? Cheers, cheers. Oh. Nathan. Hello, hello, hello. Tube yes. Tinkerer, the troll that he is, claims we have overwhelming evidence for the sphere. Well, we haven't seen any evidence for the sphere, otherwise, we wouldn't be here. We have blurry pictures of Blackpool. <laughs> yeah, well, we also have the, the uh, street lamps, but we shouldn't see them. So they may be blurry, but why can we see them anyway? So what's the answer to Tinkerer? Occam's razor. All oh, right. So Occam's razor applies, and the Earth must be flat then, because we're not seeing the level of curvature that soundly produces at the same distance, are we? So why is that? Who's the one that's doing something different, wrong or otherwise diff like different? One of us isn't right. One of us is doing something wrong. If we okay, live on a sphere, just... we should be validating soundly's work, and we're not doing, are we? Why is that? 
let's just confirm for the audience who have tuned into this as an isolated show exactly what we're talking about. So Ranty has been out to watch the Blackpool Illuminations from Barrow in Finesse. Is that correct, correct, Ranty? It is. And it's about 18 plus miles, flat as a pancake. We see this stuff because it's there. There's no other explanation required. If you believe the Earth is flat, which it obviously and observably is. Now, if on the other hand, like Tube Tinkerer, you believe, because you are religious by nature, that the Earth is in fact a sphere and you presuppose it has a radius, then you would have to assert that the things that we see in Ranty's footage are in fact phenomena. Not just seeing stuff, not just a building, not a concrete noun at all, but in fact, something that's not really there. It's obscured from view based on the fact that the Earth is a sphere, if you presuppose it's a sphere, and you have a bulge blocking your view, but we still see them, causing a bit of a problem, unless you need to assert that it's slightly looming non-standard refraction hyena effects, bringing these buildings back into view where they should not be there. Of course, that is a total bunch of nonsense and would only be asserted by religious zealots who believe the Earth is a sphere. It is a highly convoluted uh, band-aid theory. Band-aid I have a request, band-aid over band-aid. Mr. Oh. Soundly, if you're listening or one of your friends tell you, I need the, the exact location where you took your videos of uh, Lake Pontchartrain Bridge, and you can leave me a comment on one of my videos, Jose JG Gonzalez on YouTube, or you can DM me on Discord by looking for me at No Way Jose. Thank you. Ooh. Oh, I just wanted to just address one thing, Nathan, if you could put, pop me on screen as well. I didn't get a yeah, no chance to, to do that last in the no last problem. show. Good to have this footage on this show as well. If you can, just Hello. give it a quick summary. Assume that nobody's heard this information because this is a separate show now. So go through it all again if you don't mind. It's five okay. minutes tops. Okay. Um, hmm. you can, you've, you've thrown me now. Um, so essentially I went to, let me do it on Google Earth, I don't like using maps, but I can't, for whatever reason, uh, it won't let me use Street View on it, but I drove to this location, um, it was a 170 mile round trip, I went down onto the beach, got as close to the water's edge as I could, and I looked across to watch the Blackpool Illuminations, um, Distance to objects like the big one, um, which I videoed before I went live, um, was 18.3 miles. And some of the stuff that I saw was uh, on this, in front of the tower, Blackpool Tower, they had the band that was playing on this little square across the road from it, um, which is, you know, essentially on the seawall. And we saw the band playing um, with all the flashes and things going off in front of that we saw the the big wheel here we saw the big wheel and uh yeah i mean essentially it was uh, floor to floor um we saw the street lights all the way through um last year i got asked about the street lights why couldn't we see the street lights but i did the observation last year from a slightly different location and it was after midnight so i'm assuming that probably there was some, re- some something to do with that, um, and obviously the, the the line of sight. I had a new line of sight this year, and I saw an awful lot more. And that's basically um, what happened last night. But yeah, sorry, I just wanted to address something, um, Nath, which was the the very bottom of the the Ferris wheel. People are asking, well, we're we're asking, how come we don't see the very bottom of the of the ferris wheel and i can address that right now so i'm going to put a line of sight in this was my second location where i did the gps from let me guess ranty because there's a building block in it that's it my guess could well be could well be could well be and if there but, is a building block in it bang goes your curvature <laughs> but that's beside the point the point is we see all the street lights anyway so yeah it's not it's not really like it's going to mean anything you know let's be honest So, right, so I've put the line in there. And what do you know? In the way, 
we have at the end of North Pier. <laughs> at the end of North Pier, we have the family bar. Now, as you can see, it's a one, two, two story building on top of the pier. And, and it's closer it is, to us. And it's closer to us, so it's in the foreground. And this family bar, that's the only obstruction in the way, uh, my direct line of sight between that and the actual Ferris wheel, which is here, right? Uh, that would stop me seeing the very bottom of this because it would be in the way. So that's why when you actually see the footage and such, um, things like, let's see, it might be on this one, let's see. There, so there's the Ferris wheel. So there we have the Ferris wheel flashing away. Uh, we can see it; it's nicely cut off at the bottom in a square. It, you know, it's like a. You can see that you aren't seeing the bottom of it, but then you see the street lights behind. So you realise that you know that is the blockage that's causing that. But um, there is a, there is a further embarrassment for the people that believe that we live on a sphere. We established. Oh, that, sorry. Um, can I just say that if I'm just going to play this for a little bit? But this is the band that I was talking about in front of the pier, that's in front of Blackpool Tower on the seawall, uh, no more than thirty feet above sea level at this time. So I'm just going to let that play for a little bit. So go on, Anthony. The question that the curve calculator, of course, doesn't address is how tall should the Ferris wheel be when it's 18 miles away? It's only 110 feet or whatever height it is when it's right in front of you. But when it's 18 miles away, it's a lot smaller. So you've got to shrink that Ferris wheel down because of the, the, the effect of perspective, and then drop it into the curve calculator. And what do you know? We sh none of it should be seen. None of it at all. Yeah, right. we can see basically everything. So in essence, what Anthony's saying <laughs> well, is the curve calculator doesn't ac account for the angular resolution of something that you are viewing. It only deals in absolute sizes, which is to say correct. that if you're going to plug in a value for the tower, you're going to plug in the feet and inches tower. So like you were standing next to it with a tape measure in your hand and reading off the measurement at the bottom of the tape measure, which you're not doing, you don't get that view from a distance you don't get that view ever you get an angular size of anything you are looking at and the calculator essentially ignores all of that it also ignores angle of incident the actual angle of attack on the item that you're looking at and then lower that figure normally below the midpoint of your camera if you're very low to the ground you have a very very narrow angle to anything in the distance and what you have as an effect of that reduced angle is Aries diffraction when combined with the angular resolution at distance. All of these things are completely ignored in the begging the question proof of nothing perspective omitting curve calculator. So it's a useless tool, it doesn't prove anything. It also begs the question. It already knows the Earth is a sphere, it's got a radius value. So it doesn't help you prove anything, it just helps you beg the question. They already know it's a sphere, right? They've got a radius value. So you're not trying to prove anything to yourself with this calculator, it just begs the question. So that's um that's basically the nails in the coffin. I mean, it's been that long since anybody's brought in evidence of curve looking at the horizon for curve curvature, right? Because it got destroyed by Mick West when he admitted that there was the assumption that we lived on a sphere. So shout out to Mick West for admitting that. I didn't actually think he'd ever admit that, but he did. Nonetheless, nobody's presented it for a while. And I was only saying to Nathan last night, late on a phone call, do you know, we haven't had anybody presenting anything on, on like observations for ages. I've actually forgotten half the arguments. It's been that long. <laughs> And thankfully, we had the conversation just last night about the um, the inadequacies of the Metabook Curve Calculator. It doesn't reduce the building uh, the building size relative to the distance. It applies it as though it was right in front of you. And of course, that's clear nonsense. That wheel should shrink. So even if you could see the tippy tops of it, you shouldn't see any of it once you've reduced it in size over dist as a function of distance. Because perspective is a thing, and your calculator doesn't take it into account. And it gives us the perception that we live on a, a sphere sometimes. But when you take into account perspective, never works ever. Yeah, and I mean, just look at this. I mean, these lights are just past the big one, so these are further away. I mean, these these lights we're talking eighteen and a half miles away that are essentially street lights. <laughs> these are just street lights, eighteen and a half miles away. Go figure. And this was this was the video that I took before the illuminate the, before the illuminations were switched on. So. The tower wasn't on, and I couldn't understand it. Why is the tower not on? It's like, and I'm thinking to myself, well, the big wheel should be there, and the tower, I can only see the top of it lit up. So, why isn't it? Why isn't it lit up? Can you move your mouse? <laughs> you know, um, just move your mouse off sorry? screen. 
Just I've got it nice and big for this stream, just so we've got some clear images without your mouse on them. That'd be brilliant. Thanks. Right, okay. And uh, obviously, there's all the street lights. There's the street lights. There's, there's the back of the big one where it turns around on itself. There's the that light that's in the in the foreground here. This light is actually something that's on Central Pier. It's, um, I can show you that on Google Earth now. So that would be be this. This. Where is it? Let's zoom up. So this pole that flashes in the, you know, it, it's switched on at night. It's the only thing that's switched on on this. And there we have it. Direct line of sight. Um, there's plenty of other videos that I could show you that I've not even had a chance to look at yet because I did, I filmed quite a lot actually. Up to you. Personally, well, I'll yeah, well, review them first before you stick them out, just so it doesn't get tedious with us. I mean, if you want to keep playing them through in the background, I'll leave you on if you want. Um, and whilst you are doing that, let me just let people know in chat that Pete's, um, Pete, oh, Pete Shea has had the uh, photograph that I used on one recent video, and I've encouraged him to join the panel and admit that he might have this one wrong. So hopefully Pete's going to do the honourable thing, come on and say, I'm sorry, I, I've got, I got this wrong. She's a normal person after all. She doesn't have facial implants or whatever it was he said. Facial prosthetics or whatever. So what we have here is we have Blackpool Tower and we have all of Blackpool to the right of it, obviously. All the street lights, all the illuminations along the promenade, all lit up. Shouldn't see them if you believe you live on a curve. There's the wheel, the big wheels. That's, that's cool as hell. bit shaky because it was so windy i mean i brought a wind break um that actually got broken because the wind was that tough um but it's just what we have to do when we're living on the coast so yeah that's it. just bear in mind that you shouldn't even see the big wheel so we're looking at the big wheel now we shouldn't see it is there any answers for the globe anyone no wants to come on and argue this They'll ignore this, Ranty. This is where, this is where you've got to poke the bear because you've got to go after people now and say, "Oi, Sly, address this knobhead," because they've got to address it. Now you're a bit too soft with them. You need to go out and fire your gun to get the attention, and then see what they come back with, and then stand your ground and say, "It's no curve." Well, the thing is, and this is what this is what really kills their argument is that all bodies of water must curve. They cannot uh, have flat water. That's a simple, for the ball model, it has to be pulled by gravity. It has to conform to the sphere. So you cannot have flat water. So anywhere that you can find bodies of water that are flat, that's why they did the Bedford Levels, levels experiment. And they both agreed that, yeah, you know, I mean, for gravity to work, there has to be a curve. And this is why they had the bet, etc. So even back then, they knew that in order to find out the shape of the earth you needed to test it using water because you cannot have flat water so how come i see flat water where i live how come other people see flat water where they live you can't have Especially flat water on you can't have, you can't flat, have water flat water on a ball but yet that's all we have is flat water that's all we see all we experience it's all flat. People still believe it's a ball. So that hump should have been in the way. Anthony, can you do the curve calcs on that? And can you work out what the curve calcs would be? What? For the height of the hump. This is that same 18 miles, Ranty? Uh, to this, it's about 17 miles. 17.2, I think it is. What am I going to put for your observer height? 350 feet? <laughs> six feet. Put six feet, even though the altitude said one metre, which, you know, I'm not going to argue because I was that it was that flat and I was that close to the water. You know, I wouldn't argue with that. My tripod was set to two feet. Well, let's go six feet. Let's give them six feet. 
At what distance? 18 miles? For this observation, for the... for the, Hang on. Just let me sort that out. 17.2 uh, to this. This isn't to the to the big one. So, so what would the hump about, be? About the height of the... Uh, what are you talking about? Are you talking about the... Um, the, bulge. the bulge. Yeah. What bulge? <laughs> bulge that you have anyway? to look through the floor to see. Right, so it's... 49 feet at half the distance. So you could double the height of that because it's like half the distance away because perspective is a thing relative to the target you're looking at. But 49 feet, it says. Right. So there could so, be a wall of water obscuring the whole of that coastline. Shouldn't see any of them streetlights. Nope. And like I say, this is just a video that I'm just letting play. I'll get to something different. There we go. There's the tower. There's all the streetlights. Can you see all the streetlights there beyond the wall? Can I just ask, Nathan, are you time out, rump, timing out Rumpus because he won't respond? Well, he's just basically coming up with straw men and ad homs in the chat saying, Ranty can't get anything correct. That's not a rebuttal. No. Rumpus, why don't you join? And if you can let people take turns and respond, let's hear what you've got to say about it. Why can we see right down to the beach? It just clicked to me that I remember, I think yesterday I was scrolling to YouTube and I heard the godless engineer doing a video, making fun of Eric Dubayon about whatever. And he was telling like, he was saying, but you have to understand if you are a six foot high person, the only, the horizon you're gonna see it at around three miles max. And I was like, what? Three miles to the horizon? Then what are all these 10, 20 miles away observations we all doing? That's crazy. Three miles? Wow. No, to his credit, he said, look, I'll investigate it. Fine. That's a perfectly adequate response. Thank you, Rumpus. Yeah, but we're not going to wait months and months and months for a response on it. You know, it takes you about 10 seconds to work out what's going on here. You can have a day. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Oh, by the way, yeah. Tube Tinkerer says, um, so blurry pictures show that the Earth's flat. Well, you accept worse blurry pictures from Ponch Train. Oh, well, it was, oh, hold on, it hold was on. a nighttime observation. Show, tube Tinkerer, present your best possible picture of a satellite. The best you've got. <laughs> you want to see blurry images, mate? I'll show you blurry images. <laughs> yeah, because you can't make out that that's Blackpool Tower. <laughs> and what's even better is now that the lights are back on again, um, I'm going to see if I can get Conspiracy Cats to join me at Hoy Lake. He seems to be on the fringe of going onto the dark side, so we might not actually do it now. Uh, but from 30 miles away, you shouldn't see that tower at all, but we know that we can see it. So shout out to Conspiracy Cats. Let's see if you've got an explanation for why we see this at nighttime with very little to zero refraction. <laughs> Indeed. Indeedy. Yeah, again, you, you're giving them enough rope to hang themselves, which is fair enough, but... You know, that it's not a necessary question. Why do we see it? Well, we, we just see it. There's no explanation required. We just see this stuff. It's there. That's why we see it. No explanation required. What's that you say? Oh, there should be an earth curve in the way. Says who? Oh, your model? Your pseudoscience model that proves nothing? No, no, no. Let's not have your fantasy and religion put onto us. We're just looking at stuff, thank you. Don't need any explanation for looking at stuff. Just looking at it. It's okay, Rumpus is finishing the, some details on, on Anthony's video presentation, you know? What, the video from like months and months and months <laughs> yeah. ago? Yeah. Yeah. Contemporaneously, when I released the evidence publicly, which I did at yeah. the, the first UK Flat Earth conference that I spoke at. <laughs> Shout out to Rumpus for not doing what you said you were going to do. Again. He's about to finish up the final draft. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Apollo. He's, he's, he's on it. You. He's on it, man. Oh, Apollo, that reminds me. You offered oh. to do a photograph of something that's out there. Um, is that offer still on the table? A photograph of what? Well, I'm glad you ask. <laughs> Could you get a photograph of the, I'm going to call it what it is, or what it appears to be, the hexagon. Now, others would call it the cube that's on top of Saturn. Do you reckon you can get that? Um, I don't know. I've never um, looked for it. But there are some really, really high resolution photos of uh, which one was it? Saturn or Jupiter? Yeah, 
Yeah, so Saturn's got like this hexagon on top of it, but I mean, I've seen pl plenty of images that I've, I've got no way of even remotely validating, and I've never seen it myself with my own telescope, you've got to be kidding. Um, but if somebody's got professional equipment and can get that kind of shot, man, I'd love to see that. Uh, yeah, I did see some really high resolution uh, amateur photos of uh, of Jupiter, but I'm not sure. Uh, I would have to look it look them up uh, again. Like with a really nice telescope. Exactly. They may. Have the, I'm not too concerned about you going and getting it from this point forward. If somebody at that observatory happens to have um, pictures of that, then great. You know, as long as they're just you know pictures, regular pictures taken through a, a telescope and not. Highly adapted with CGI. Apollo, do you do you find some videos of a rocket leaving a pressure system and going into the non-pressure area in space? That you you kind of had warm up homework, right? I didn't really follow up on that. I um, am currently busy with many other NASA stuff. Some great. Um, how do you call it? When things progress, yeah, some great things have been uh, happening with the stuff I'm working on. Cool. Time is always a constraint, unfortunately. Yes. Um, some time ago, I talked about these uh, Apollo 14 photos, uh, and I showed a uh, a scan of it. And I've just yesterday I received about nine more of them, and I've already scanned one. Uh, in really high resolution, something like 20,000 by 19,000 pixels. So we're, that's like 400 megapixel, I'm not sure. Just so it's on but, the screen, uh, can you tell the audience how big that is in inches and whatever, you know, when it's actually laid out? Um, well, the print is 20 by 24 inch. I have done uh, a eight, Sorry, I have done an um, 800 dots per inch scan. So if you were to print that out at, let's say, 300 dots per inch, you'd get something like, uh, wait, let me get a calculator. Oops. Yeah, the point being is it's a very big image in very high resolution and you're scanning it into the computer in in a huge size, in high resolution, high yes. pixel density. I can actually show it now if you want on screen. Cool, yes please. Sure. Wait, let me first close some things I'd like to keep private. Yes please. Let's first calculate the approximate megapixels is about 380. Okay, let's get to the scans. They aren't combined yet. I, uh, I've sent them out to um, Paul yesterday, who is going to put them all together. Good, let's open. Uh, this one. <laughs> Sorry, it's taking a while with our massive uh, files. There we go. This one is 6,000 by 9,000. And this is a crater. You can increase the contrast to, to make it more pleasing. That looks better. Yeah, now higher contrast. Yeah, this is uh, these are the uh, photos. And only two are online at um, are online by NASA in a high resolution. So uh, I'm putting a lot more online than NASA has. So the problem is, I've got about, this is one, one of six uh, parts, by the way. 
but the problem is that 10 prints were like $600 for me. So what I'm going to be doing, doing I'm, I'm going to scan all of these and then I am going to try and resell them. So I hope I can make my money back. And once I've sold them, I will uh, publish everything uh, online. That's the, the plan uh, at least. Let's open another one. Actually, I can just give you a Google Drive link where you can download uh, the six frames right now, just uh, on your computer. Wonderful. If you stick it in the side chat of the Hangout once you finish displaying them, I'll stick it in the chat and in the info box like I did last time. Okay. So here you can see part of the frame number because each photo was taken on film on uh, hand with hand written down on this film are the frame numbers so here you have 16 for apollo 16 you have 80 for the magazine and you have part of the frame number which in this case is one four one zero four five five This part doesn't really have any interesting things. But uh, you can see some, you know, rocks here, or allegedly, of course. So, sorry, just Roland in the chat says, so what? What does this prove? Well, it's not attempting to prove anything. It's just interesting. Well, what I think is interesting is that NASA does not have these online. And that's why I want to put it online, you know, because currently it isn't. So, so yeah, never seen, but, never before seen footage. People in the chat. No, oh, so what? Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> and which, which mission were these from again? Apollo. Apollo uh, fourteen. Fourteen, right? The funny thing is that. With the high resolution and all, I can't really make out any definitive physical landmarks. It's just a bunch of dots and blotches that can be interpreted as craters if you choose to see it like it were a shadow. But I don't see rocks or anything, any specific features would, that would indicate physicality. This uh, is the moon, right? Uh, let's really? see. I've got another one. Yes, this is uh, the moon. You mean rocks like uh, like this, with with uh, with shadows? What, what so, do you mean? So, so, you mean a little more? Oh, hold on. What do what, you mean? What, what? what do you no, mean? I'm already. Arwin? Yeah, almost. Sorry. What do you mean, Arwin? You can't see rocks. I mean, do you mean that there's no distinguished? I don't know. We're not close that enough. It I wouldn't have said to see it as, as another rocks. thing, just as a visual effect. But a yeah, visual effect. It is kind of funny that, yeah, in this case, it would suggest more a, a reflective nature rather than just a light blotch type phenomena. Because it is very consistent. What do you that mean? Part was. What do you Zoom mean? Zoom in on any other part, because I find the rest looking a lot blurrier. Well, we we this is a very high resolution scan, and a print only has so much resolution. You know, it is an analog copy, so it has a resolution limit. I get um, that, but the other picture had a lot sharper details in it. See, it's like in focus right there. But I'd like to see another part that it has a similar sharpness. Because this looks much blurrier. Well, that's because there are less defining features. 
that's no excuse. Everything has a defined feature. Everything physical. Bound to be rocks at places or just things. Yeah. But this is the only sharp part so far that you've shown me in this entire picture. Define sharp. In mean... focus. More detail. It clearly stands out. Hmm. See? But these rocks are bigger than um, the area around it. So, of course, it's going to have a higher resolution because, because it, it takes up more of, of the image. Yeah, but if it's just one film, Oops. one photograph with a giant lens, then it shouldn't matter. Everything should be in focus at the same resolution. I think everything does have the same resolution, but not everything has the same amount of um, distinguishable features. No, no, it's, it's, it's a clarity sharpness issue. And this spot right there that you're showing me right now is the only spot in which I can sort of identify cast shadows. Maybe that is. Maybe that is because it is the, let's see, maybe that's because it is the biggest crater, so it's bound to have the biggest, um, you know, definable features. That, or it could just be edited in. So, edited in. Yeah. So, you mean they created this bare landscape and only on select locations they would put um, something recognizable. Well, well no. I think it is rather CGI rendering. I don't think so, Arwen. I mean, we know that what they did was take extremely high resolution photos of the moon and then create a scale model that was nigh on perfect. And there's, there's images... Why is of, the rest not I'm just saying... Not sharp. The, the only bit that for me is questionable is how they were taken not the authenticity of or the credibility of being actual pictures of the moon I, I i don't know why you'd question that arwen if i'm honest but you know go ahead if you want to i don't know it's it, it's coming from nasa so they are expert at faking things and i think that this may also be edited in some way it just looks like there's one sharp region in the entire photograph it's the only region in which i can actually identify shadows and the sh and the rest just look I mean, I, I actually agree with Arwen. I, I mean, it's from NASA. But, I mean, we already know they're full of it. So. Mm, I don't know how this compares to high wires on the ISS. To me, this is just pictures of the moon. I mean, I don't know how, how, how much time you guys have spent just staring at the moon. Me, a lot. And I, I don't see any <laughs> issue here. I don't know. Um, I think... Apollo, you'd agree you've spent plenty of time staring at the moon through a telescope lens? This, there's no issue here, right? This is what it looks like. Can you zoom on to the entire picture? If you can deduce how far, how far the closest zoom you can do to these pictures, if you can deduce how high in Earth, you know, base measurements, would it be 20, 30, 100 miles uh, away, you think? Um, I've got no way of verifying. You can't answer that. Just look at it. Yeah. It's again. There's one spot that has very distinguishable features, and the rest is all blurred up. See, it's the same thing. I disagree. You can no, just see all the these resolution. little. You can see all these little craters here. Yeah, but you're assuming they're craters. They don't look to cr like craters to me. They look like smudges. Well, there are smudges. Um, wait, let's first answer your first uh, question I don't think these are CGI renders because these are old prints and I don't think that in this time period when this would have been uh, made they had computers with enough memory to render you such don't need computers what, what year was you don't this need mission? computers Disney did it manually 
Ja, ja. Ich war sehr, sehr gut in it. Very early on. Are you guys missing that there's that there's lines in this whole image? I think they're trying to suggest yeah, also about this. They're trying to suggest that these this whole image what is a result of orbital mechanics and they're stitching them together. So I guess pass A has it had a different resolution for some reason as opposed to the one No, the no this is a these Apollo 14 photos were a single Exposure. Well, then, what are these lines? What What year was this Apollo? Hold mission? on, hold on, hold on. Apollo. What are the lines? They are scratches on. Um, they are scratches on the uh, negative that were used to dup that um, that were used to duplicate the original. So they would take. It's the a perfect. It's a perfect line. No, it isn't. Oh, yeah, it is. It moves yes. around. Zoom out, you'll see it. Up. It's all the way through. No, it isn't. Yeah, it is. You scroll down, and it's exactly the same line. It is perfect. It's like a. But there are a lot of lines that don't continue throughout the entire scan. Sorry, what's, like this one. What's right the here. issue? What, what? Why would they fake this? The, the faking bit is how they claim it's been taken, not the image. I mean, I, I really don't see the issue here. Am I um, in this? Um, does everyone else think, oh no, this is fake? It's like, it's just pictures of the yes. moon. What's, what's the big deal? Yeah, there's no issue, yeah, no. There's fake. pictures, yeah. I mean, I just think you're clutching straws I think straws it's probably inspired lines. on the surface of the moon and then worked at with artistry. But we know That's that they did definitely take high resolution pictures. The reason I know that NASA did that is because they created a scale model. Now, unless you're going to claim that every picture that they've presented of that scale model with camera tracks around it and astronauts standing next to it is fake also, I'm going to assert that this is just one of the series of high resolution pictures taken by NASA who are absolutely on the cutting edge of cinematography, far more than Disney. So th that's what they do. They, they take good pictures of stuff when they want to. But that's all this is, and they've used it for, we don't know how it's been taken, or who's taken it, or the methodology used in taking it. But I d definitely wouldn't question the authenticity that this is just a picture of the moon. But that's what I was saying. It is an artist, they worked on it. It is the moon. So what you're saying in, is it's a picture yeah, that they've airbrushed and stuff, is that what you're saying? But it's only very specific locations where there are real definable features and the rest is just smudgy it looks like things have been added onto it well arwen is right i mean that's what i'm saying the lines between the lines you can see within one one grid there's a lesser resolution and then you go right across that very straight line and there's a higher resolution so they are strips they're stitched together strips of iced phone, I guess. no they aren't let's have another look so at it. like Hold it's let's just have a look let's just it have a look at like... let me have a look at the, the line and just see if that assertion is actually true i mean i've got several monitors of very high resolutions i can look at it in great detail and i make it a bit bigger as well but the problem is that contrast on it it should it should highlight the the line even better so if you mess around with the color and contrast it should bring it out that light it does look like a line i'll be honest Oops. Yeah, yeah there's a line there i can see the line and we've been given an explanation as they duplicate it it causes scratches presumably on the duplication machine but so what what's yeah, wrong with that explanation i, I, I have no it's problem taking that line. and accepting it purely on face value because i see no motivation to to, to edit it in that regard I just don't see the benefit to them or us or what they can try to achieve. It's the same as add definable get, features. It's the to, same we get from Google Earth. Physicality. Wait, the, the you, screen what? that's on right now, you guys don't see a, a screen full of lines that go across it? Yeah. Is that me? No, we all see the lines and the explanation given is that when they duplicate this frame, the, the machine causes scratches on presumably the duplication film. That's the explanation yeah. given by Apollo. I've got no reason to, to just not accept that on face value because I don't see any motivation or reason to doctor just a simple picture of the moon, a super high resolution image. And it looks, to me, it looks really good. I just don't, I, I don't know, it just seems 
very conspiratorial to try and label this as somehow fraudulent and I don't see the need. The the story that goes along with it, yeah, rip that to pieces all day long. Sorry, but my eye just sees the difference. It's a difference in structure. Fair if enough. they were layering not talking about the lines. Just seeing like that picture is made in a different resolution or with different colors, with different effects than all the rest. And the rest, every time I look at one of these craters, it's just like, yeah, that's not necessarily a crater. It's just patterns. But I mean, with the other one, with that one little square there, I can just see clearly this is more lit up and there's very distinct shadows that look that suggest physicality very much, much more than the rest of the entire picture. That's okay. something I'm just noticing. Fair enough. I mean, Don't it's, it's, I'm not noticing it. If you are, I'm not going to argue with you, I mean, Fair enough. Don't you, don't you think that if they layer parts together that you would see these uh, different layers intersecting at the point where they change from one part to the other? But I don't see that when I look at the complete print, which I have next to me uh, in a uh, in a canister right now. Fine. So your argument for this motivation-wise, Arwen, is to disguise the physicality or non-physicality of the moon. Is that what you're saying? No. To not to disguise the non-physicality. Yeah, it's sure. Basically, to add physicality to the perception to promote, to uh, give a foundation, literally, <laughs> for the moon landings. Mm, because yeah. people have to believe it's physical in order yeah. for that to even be remotely possible. Yeah, make it look like uh, there are rocks and stuff up there that people can walk on instead of just the light in the sky that probably is. Well, so, so what, what have I, hold on, hold on one second. What have I learned every time Apollo comes to the panel that everybody is welcome because I have seen Apollo doing presentations on the non sequitur show and other platforms. And I, if I'm not mistaken, Apollo is a, is a proponent of the, of the spinning globe heliocentric model, but he, anybody can come and present uh, images, videos, anything. Now the question is the, the, the issue is when you, explain the how, who, when, where, and make claims on what, what went down for the evidence that you're presenting. That's what the issue is. Anybody can present a, a you know, video or evidence, but don't try to present a narrative next to it if you are not sure what went down. If you were not there, don't, don't make claims because we really do not know. Hey, I never claimed this, this was evidence for anything i just exactly. wanted to give i just i i just wanted to give context to the to the images mm -hmm. exactly and that's very appreciated and thank you yeah as i say anybody can present any evidence and that's why you are okay because you present pictures and videos and it's okay because you're not making any claims about it you're just presenting what what your defined is that you got and i personally thank you for that yeah. no accusations towards you thank you for presenting the footage and another thing, a recent development, are that we have uh, converted some photos on Pioneer 11 tapes to uh, PNGs. So this is the tape right here. This is dated 1978. Yes, correct. And it's actually easier if I do this. So we've I've acquired these Pioneer 11 tapes from eBay, and I've sent them to a data recovery company. So it, it, isn't this supposed to have been lost, or is this different footage? You know what I mean? We were told that they don't have any original footage. Or was that just from the original first? No, it's telemetry uh, data from the original moon landing that's not that's not there. Uh, well, it depends what kind of some of it still whatever. So this is the 
data on the Pioneer 11 tape in hexadecimal. But if you go down, you can kind of see how there is a, how there is a round pattern in this data. These are all zeros. All I see is blonde, brunette, redhead. <laughs> Go down like this. All I so, see is memories of Commodore 64, my brother editing it. So it's this is the... Hexadecimals. It's all a huge hexadecimal. Yeah, so that's one picture. And we have a few days ago converted it to a modern image. So this is the result of the first image on the Pioneer 11 tape. Uh, you know, take it uh, at face value. Of what? What is this? Um, I've oh. talked. I've talked with somebody that worked on the Pioneer 11 uh, data before, and he says this particular data set are photos of the uh, zodiacal light. These are, what? These are, these are mainframe reel-to-reels. So back in the day, if you go and watch um, Airplane, the movie called Airplane, Leslie Nielsen, you'll see in a various scenes of that movie, they're in a mainframe room, and you've got all these um, reel-to-reel -reel computers that are whirring away with the data so modern hard drives obviously don't work like this anymore but you're magnetically encoding stuff onto tape back in the day when you had mainframe computers running this information and what uh, apollo has acquired from ebay amazingly is some of these old reel-to-reels and he's done the painstaking job of decoding the digital data off the tape so that he can then process it and format it and it's tedious it's long-winded and he deserves a lot of respect for doing it it's not something i would ever endeavor to do but it's nice to see the results while the audience go boring. It's like, oh, screw you, audience. It, I wouldn't normally really say that. But... But what is it? What am I seeing here? I, I don't get it. I don't really pronounce it. it. So the echo. So wait, wait, wait. This is the right. zeros and one data translating into this this image, right? This graphic. No, this is something different. Yes. Yeah. Yes or no? Okay, I got yes and no. Yes. <laughs> Is it an actual photograph of something? The translation of the zeros and ones to a to a graphical representation. Oh no! It it um it was saved. Um, no, it did, it is an image on the tape, but the format that was used is no longer used today. So oh, we yes. had to figure it out. So we had to figure out how this format works, and then we converted it or three or four at the moment, we converted to the normal PNG format. Mm -hmm. So currently we have three black and white photos. We have one color photo, but we still need to work out how we need to use the color layers to create a color image. So that's something we are still working on. Okay. Uh, I've talked to Ted Strike, who has worked on Apollo, sorry, on Pioneer 11 uh, photos before. And he says these are photos of a zodiacal light. Um, but what is that? I don't even like zodiacal light. What are that is visible and the Sorry, just before you come off that screen, Apollo. So the, what they're asking you is, what's on screen right now? Oh, that's the image converted from the raw data to a to a nor to, to a mo normal modern image format. What? So from the well, digital, but what is it though? What the hell? <laughs> I don't know. At pictures and it's like our photographs, and it's just. It looks like an eye or something with a, a scratch on the. I mean, is it supposed to be the moon? Is it? Is it? Nah. What is it? It's a light phenomena. Where? I don't know. In, In my closet. closet? And there's all kinds of pictures. <laughs> closet. Yeah. So many well, questions. Where's it? I don't get it. Because when I Google image zodiacal light, it, it kind of something reminiscent of the 
Aurora Borealis. It looks like this light coming up. Nah, the the Aurora Borealis is different. This is more no, no, no. I just, like I a just light shining from light. upwards. I mean, search, Google it. Very yeah. weird. Never seen that. Or and there's don't this remember like grid, seeing that. There's like a grid of lights in in the image, like that it's look like more stars. Like a, where one, it's a perfect one big grid. lamp shining upwards with a limited range, but it's lighting up a lot of stuff. Very I don't nice. locally. Very nice. I don't know what we have to uh, look for. I have sent sent the image images yeah. that we converted last week to this uh, person, and I he has not yet responded. But I do hope he can clarify what we are seeing. Is, is this one image or these are, like a couple of? These are three images. Uh, oh, and you got to move. You got a moving like a GIF or something, right? Yeah. Okay. It looks like there's three or one, two, one, one two, yeah. three. There's yeah, it's three images unless I'm counting. Unless hey guys, want to hear the? Uh, the explanation of what zodiacal lights are supposed to be i just looked i know yeah go read it and i, I looked at images also sunlight scattered by interplanetary dust causes this phenomena <laughs> zodiacal light is best seen during twilight after sunlight in spring and before sunrise in autumn when the zodiac is at a steep angle to the horizon oh yeah, to the horizon However, the glow is so faint that moonlight and or light pollution outshine it, rendering it invisible. Right. Mm. It's yeah, like, okay. a, like a haze. So, yeah. So, yeah, so, I am supposed still... to be a remnant of the sunlight or something, but scattered by interplanetary dust. Interplanetary <laughs> dust, again. Interplanetary dust. It's... <laughs> Very uh, presuppositional. So yeah, I am still waiting on an up uh, on an uh, update, and uh, when we work on the color image, maybe we can define more features by messing with the uh, color channels. So uh, there are still some things we have to uh, look into. Okay, but I still want to know exactly what this is supposed to. Otherwise, we're just getting, and this is like creating fractals and ooh, let's smoke some weed and look at the, I don't know, I mean, I don't know what this is supposed to be. And I, <laughs> this, is, this is driving Eric nuts, I can tell. <laughs> All I have been told is that it are photos of zodiacal light. Oh, uh, he yeah. thinks this because the date on the, ta on the tape um, represents the time that those observation, observations were taken. He has not actually responded to my images. So maybe he will say, oh, I was wrong. It is this on, or it is that. I still, I'm still waiting for a uh, response. Okay. So let me get the story straight. You have purchased my screen. material from, from eBay or what? Um, Amazon or whatnot, right? Yeah. And these were the what analog digital tapes that you're tr you're, you're trying to transfer to to PNGs digital format. Is that what we're doing here? Uh, yes, basically. So you have, you physically bought analog tapes. They are digital tapes. But okay. Yes. So they've already been digitized in what sort of oh. file? Like, what is this file? Is it a dot mov? What what is it? It is. Uh, raw binary data, basically. So, okay, so th that that sheet that you had with the zero zero zeros and mostly zeros. That's the binary data represented in hexadecimal. Right, I get that. So you um, you have that material. So what what is this? What is this move? This GIF or whatever it is. What is this file specifically right now? So we have taken uh, binary actually, data. From a spreadsheet, I assume. No, no, taken directly uh, from from the tape. So I've okay. we've bought the tape, we've cleaned it, we've put it in a recorder, okay. and we we've. I'm trying to open uh, some metadata. Okay, so you have you have magnetic real tapes, the old 
the old yeah. like, e-track. Okay, yes, so you have you got that from from Amazon. But they're digital, uh, eBay. not analog. So it's not the, the process might be the same to imprint it magnetically onto the tape, but it's ones and zeros that are being imprinted, not not analog waveforms. So it's the same yes. principle as you would put onto your hard drive, but just on a very very slow magnetic tape. But the principle's the same. And this is the net result. This is what is extracted from it and then converted it to what you've seen. Now, presumably, you've no clue either what it is. You know, you've got a vague notion, but that's it at this stage. It's just interesting and time consuming. And, you know, we may find out what it is. We may not, but don't let it drive you nuts. Yes, exactly. Ar Arwen, what do you have on your screen right now? Yeah, that's an actual picture of Zodiacal Light. And Google is full of it. So. This is the phenomena that is supposedly recorded on the, on Apollo's. How many footage. stars in that sky? So where's this where's this source from, Arwin? Who's taken this picture? Don't know. I sure, could probably just, trace just, this it. This is an image search from Google, presumably just for zodiacal light, right? This is they all look yeah. the same. So this is from ESO, whatever that is. That's that's what I'm getting when I image search this this term. It's basically, like I said, kind of an aurora. I mean, the theme. I don't know what that is. Well, yeah, the zodiacs. Uh, there's the Big Dipper. There's there's Leo. Uh, the zodiacal light. Okay. Let's see what else has. Is this a new term on everyone else as well? I've never heard of this. It's all over the place. All yeah, different like sources. Pyramids of oh, that image is so not real. Who sees that? Now, look at the clouds. What are these? Is that is that the Milky Way or something? What is that supposed to be? Oh, that's great a rift. clear night. It's a great rift. Like, what what is this cosmic cloud? <laughs> no, that's the right. That's the belt of stars. Have you not stars. seen that before? Have you really not seen that? Not with my that eyes. Is part of the sky. It is part of the sky. Sorry. Yeah. I, I get that. There's an ocean there, and, a, and a... I, I really wish that, I lived that is actually what it looks like. That's that. not fake. That's that is really what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> you I know, mean, that's, a, that's insane. Not <laughs> that's I wish I wish that you could see that. that. That's, that's see cool. That. You can that's see that. Cool. But you can see that. Yeah, go to the desert. But go somewhere really dark. I've, I've been up in the Andes. I just saw a lot of white dots. Uh, dots. I mean, just a multitude of stars. I've never seen this gaseous clouds and stuff. Yeah, I wouldn't really? even know. What to, I wouldn't even know what to do with myself if I saw that. That's crazy. I live in New York. I don't see anything like that. I oh, you're not, not going to see a squat, man. <laughs> nah, man. I don't see. No, I mean, I've been up in like the Andes that. mountains, um, up near Peru, Peru and Argentina, and it's, wow. I mean, the stars you see, but I, I don't see these. Cloud like things. Check this one out. This is crazy. I mean, this has got it. This is not the naked eye. This is a, a lens that must be some fish eye lens. But right, well, aside from that, but the, the exposure, I mean, the human eye. Are there people really saying that the human eye sees this? The naked eye? Yeah. These I mean, I believe I it because I was in, I, I was out in Arizona last year, and the sky out there compared to where I live is so much. Clearer, Lighter. like, yeah, it was amazing. I didn't see anything like this, like the, the nebulous clouds and all this craziness. I didn't see that, but I did see amazing displays of stars that I had never seen before. It was crazy. So if this is, if we can see this from Earth, why don't we? Why didn't we get any of this this sky view from the uh, moon landings? Just black. <laughs> Shout out to Rod for the super chat. Thank you very much. Well, well, I'm a bit envious. The Globers say that you don't see the stars because there is no atmosphere to see the light through. But that's that's their right. Anybody can go and see this. Argument. Just go somewhere dark, and you can see this. Not not necessarily this thing in the middle of the picture right now. Sorry, I should have been paying more attention to what I want to got on screen. This 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 is new on me. I must admit. But the the Great Rift, the Milky Way. Yeah, you can see that. Just the amount of stars. Sick photo. Yeah, it's really nice. The I've got a really full of them. I mean, I've seen the aurora. But I've been up in Finland. And oh, this is from NASA. <laughs> I want to see the expo. I've never seen from Earth this yeah. sort of stuff. 
Yeah. Oh, really? this was your I, I, I love how there, shocked you are. So I, I, I just love the fact that you can't quite believe it. <laughs> That's brilliant. Well, I don't know. I've never seen it. I mean, I'm being honest. The stars and the sky, the heavens, are, I have to swear, fucking spectacular. True. I'm not, I'm not negating. I'm not arguing that. I just, this, this, this bridge, there's a bridge here now. Like, <laughs> there's a bridge stars? in the sky, bro. Yeah. This rain, <laughs> rainbow of stars. It's Mr. got spectacles for us to inspire us. It's beautiful. I just, I, I honestly have never seen anything. Rem- the Aurora Borealis is the closest thing getting, getting towards this. What is this arc? It's a rainbow. And now I ask a global question. How does this work in a flat earth? Ha! <laughs> ha! Uh, Ooh. And it all goes round. I'm going to round out in a minute, guys. So, <laughs> is there anything that needs to be added? Oh, is there anything you were hoping to get in before we round out, Apollo, as you've presented the most on this show? Um, well, oops, Arvine. You don't oh. see stars in most Apollo photos because of exposure. The Right. Yeah. That's the story. Uh, 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 no, he gets the last word. He's done all this work. He gets to put his rhetoric in. He's going to have the last word. You can all shut up. Go ahead. <laughs> That's um, photography, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and with that i'm going to say first and foremost a huge massive enormous thank you to all of the live panel for making this debate possible and of course a massive thank you to all of the audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing this debate if you hated the show then you know exactly what to do but if you like the show maybe consider sharing it with a friend or subscribing if you've not done so already i've been nathan oakley and i'll see you all in the next video Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!